the free virtual desktop that you probably didn't know about. So while there is a really wonderful paid virtual desktop app by developer Guy Godin, link is in the video description, there is another app not too well known that is similar in that it connects you to a remote computer in virtual reality. It's called OVR VNC and it's totally free. Now it's lacking pretty much all of the features of the virtual desktop version by Guy Godin and therefore certainly no contender against his awesome app. But it does have one feature that his doesn't. It allows you to connect to multiple computers at the same time cross-platform. I thought some of you might find that interesting. Yeah, that's right. You can use it to connect to a Windows PC and any other PC running a VNC server, whether it be a Unix machine like Ubuntu, Linux, or a Macintosh. But don't ask me about Macs because I don't have one. I don't know. This isn't an official Oculus app, so you will need to sideload it. If you don't know how to do that, check out this video right up here. It's a pretty quick video. I'll show you quickly how to, to, to learn how to do that. And once you know how to do that, come back here and finish watching this video. Now for the rest of you savvy sideloaders, this will be par for the sideloading course. You know what to do. You can get the app here from this website. Link is in the video description. It looks like the app hasn't been updated in quite some time, leaving it quite a bit of room for improvement. Now most of the information I'm going to show you in this video comes directly from that website. So you can check there. However, some stuff I had to figure out on my own. So today, I'm going to be showing you a working example. Is this hood working? I don't know. Maybe I should just take it off. It's the Red Hood character, I guess, from DC. Not Red Riding Hood. Now, I didn't know anything about this app. Somebody commented on one of my posts asking if the resolution increase will work in this app. And apparently, it does. If you increase the resolution on the Oculus Quest or the Oculus Go, it will improve the visuals of this app. So you can experiment with that if you want. Video on how to do that right up here. And uh, if I didn't mention it before, this is for the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Go. So you sideload the APK file found on that site. And what it is, is a virtual reality VNC client. In order to get it to connect to a computer running a VNC server, you have to put the connection information in a configuration file named ovrvnc.toml and put that in the root of your Oculus Go or your Oculus Quest. This app does support six degrees of freedom on the Oculus Quest, but since there's really no practical reason for it, it doesn't matter. Also, you can specify your own skybox environment or your own photosphere environment. Just download an equirectangular image and place it wherever you want to in the config file. Um, we're gonna place it on the root of the SD card, but any folder you want, you just have to put that location in this config file and it will load that up when you run this application. The configuration goes as follows. The first part specifies the background image or color if you don't want a background image. Backgrounds in brackets, color is commented out in this case, and we have image pointing to the image to the location and the name of the file we're going to use for our background. The subsequent sections are to specify the screens of each computer you want to connect to. You put in their IP address, port number and password for the VNC server of that device. And also the longitude and latitude for the position of where you want that device's display to show up in VR once connected. Unless you're using a custom port number for your VNC server, you can use the port and latitude options commented out with the hashtag, also known as the pound or number symbol. You see in this example, this is actually part of my actual config. Under the first screens it has the IP address of my computer. Port is commented out because it's the default 5900. The password I just have is password123. Latitude is commented out, so it's by default just completely horizontal, not up or down. Longitude is at 35, and that's because I have two screens in this one. Lossy is true. Use pointer is true, otherwise you don't have a pointer. Pixel scaling is 0.5. That makes the screen smaller. Uh, you can have it set to one. I'll show you what both of those look like. There are some optional settings that you can configure or not, like pixel scaling, for example, changes the scale scale of your screen, so you can make your device's screen appear larger or smaller. However, you can get away with a very simple config section for your device, as in the following example. Here it just says screens, it has the host IP address, has a password, 
uh, latitude is commented out so you probably just delete that line and then it has longitude 180 in this case which would be directly in front of you and that would work great for a single screen latitude is its position vertically if it's rotated up or down positive latitude is up negative is down zero degrees is being centered and longitude is its position horizontally directly in front of you being zero degrees negative degrees is to the left positive is to the right now you can use this with any vnc server but the site has some recommendations and i went with those and seemed to get very good results i installed ultra vnc which again is all free from the ultra vnc website link is in the video description i installed the latest version on my windows 10 pc and set it to the following settings Pull full screen ultra fast enabled, legacy capture set to auto, system hook DLL, desktop duplication, and low accuracy turbo speed also enabled with max CPU set to 75. This gave me much better results than the defaults. Now I wouldn't recommend trying to game with this, but aside from browsing the web and doing non multimedia stuff, you can watch videos pretty smoothly actually, so long as it's not over 480p. Anything over that seems to have dropped frames. Also, sadly, at this point, using a Bluetooth keyboard or even a wired keyboard seems to have no effect. So everything you will do will have to be point and click using the on-screen keyboard. You can enable the Windows Touch keyboard. Now here is an example of me connecting it to two different computers. One is my main desktop computer and the other one is my laptop. My laptop screen is on the right and my main desktop screen is on the left. And now you can see the difference between pixel scaling the larger screens have pixel scaling set to 1, and the smaller screens is with me setting it to 0.5. Now, you can have a lot of different backgrounds. Here are some different backgrounds that I have experimented with. It took me a while to figure out, but I found a great place for equirectangular images. Ooh, so amazing. You can just go to Flickr and get them. And here's the link. Link is in the video description. Just scroll through the images, find the one you want, click on the download icon in the corner, click view all sizes. I would recommend image sizes between 3K to 6K. Just click on one of the sizes, wait for the image to load, then right click on the image and select inspect if you're using Chrome. Other browsers have similarly worded options. Then in the part that shows the elements, right click on what is clearly the JPEG link and select copy link address. You might have to first left click on this before you can right click and get this option. Then open a new tab Paste that into the address bar, and when the image loads, just right click it and save it. Now just name it equirect.jpg and put it onto the root of your quest, and it will load up as the background when you launch OVR VNC. Remember, you don't have to put it here. You can put it really in any folder on the quest, and you can name it anything you want. You just have to specify that in the config file. Okay guys, that's it. I will leave a link in the video description to a template config file that you can edit and modify to put the IP address of your computer that's running your VNC server and whatever password you choose for that. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down. But if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I will catch you later.